Hey guys, um, how are you doing? <laughs> um, so these days, I've been thinking a lot. Uh, I've been thinking about life quite a bit, more life. Uh, it's a great Drake album that was just released a few days ago. Um, and in it, no, I'm serious, I'm serious. It's a great album. And in it, he's basically just rapping about life. What does life mean? How do you enjoy life more? How do you look at life from different perspectives and points of view? And he's really reminiscing on his past experiences, um, you know, in the hood, in the rap game. And um, I was listening to that. So I'm already thinking about more life, right? And then Excel and Mile tell me that the theme for today's event is taking flight. And they asked me to come for the talk. And um, so I'm thinking about life. I'm thinking about taking flight. And so to be honest, when they told me the theme was taking flight, my initial reaction was, uh, this is a pretty vague theme. right? This is pretty, pretty cliche. It's actually pretty lame. Uh, it's actually a really lame theme. Because taking flight, I mean, that's so <sighs> it's taking flight. Um, so I was kind of roasting them about the theme. And then at the same time, I have to admit, the theme did resonate with me a little bit. because. Not to be even more cliche, but for me and for a lot of us, this is truly a year of taking flight. Um, my birthday is in two days, March 23rd, so I'm turning 17. Um, I'm going to graduate in a few months. Some of us are also going to graduate. Hopefully, we're going to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, no, I'm serious. I'm going to leave the school and maybe the city that uh, I've lived my entire uh, 16 years in. So that's a it's a pretty big flight to take, and that's got me thinking quite a bit about my childhood um, and my experiences here. And I was thinking about taking flight, listening to some Drake, and this story popped into my head from back when I was seven years old. Uh, so I'm coming home from a kitty birthday party on the east side, right? So picture like a smaller, cuter version of me. Um, I'm holding a balloon because, as you do, you know, what else do you do at kitty birthday parties, right? You bring home balloons. That's your present. That's like your, your goodie bag. Because balloons are great. I mean, life would be totally boring without balloons, right? They, they float. They, they're squishy. They make your voice change. They pop. Um, they float up. So I'm walking home with my balloon. And I get into the six train. Uh, it's rush hour. And you guys know six train at rush hour, right? So everyone is staring at me. I'm very conscious that everyone hates me right now because I'm bringing a big balloon, like bigger than my face, into the six train. Um, and there's no space, and it's getting crushed by people, so I'm kind of like cradling it like a fetus. Um, and I'm being super careful with it, right? And then uh, somehow we make it through five stops of the six train, and it doesn't pop, and no one shouts at me. And then we get out, and we uh, get off the platform, we walk out the stairs, we enter the outside world, and I still have my balloon somehow. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And then I see a pigeon or something, I get distracted, and I just like let it go. And my balloon, so you know, one moment I'm really happy, I got my balloon, the other moment I'm staring up and I'm watching this little red dot get smaller and smaller and fade away into the sky. Um, and that's the kind of, you know, traumatic moment that therapists talk about years after the fact. That, like, that's the kind of, that's the kind of it's, it's not funny, guys. It's, it's marked me to this day. I think about this a lot. And um, so, you know, I'm staring at this balloon and I go through the five stages of grief and everything. I do like a, I sing a funeral song in my head. And then I turn to my parents and I ask kind of the natural question that any seven-year-old would ask, which is, um, where did my balloon go? What happened to my balloon, right? Um, so my mom is kind of done with me at this point because I've just brought a balloon back five stops on the sixth train and now I just lost it. So she gives me like one of those little packs of go-go apple squeeze and she says, shut up and eat your applesauce. And my dad, so I turn to my dad and I ask him the same question and he says, well, you know, son, when kids let go of balloons, they become clouds. And all the clouds in the sky that we see today are balloons that have been lost by kids. And I thought that was really beautiful. Um, but I also realized it was a lie. And, and so the next day, I decided to try and answer the question for myself. Because when you're seven years old, and you've got a question like that in your head, you can't let go of it. It just keeps coming back and pounding at your head, right? So I get a bunch of balloons. And I go to the Great Lawn in Central Park. And um, in the middle of like apple trees and birds and whatever, like picnics. Uh, and I let balloons go, and I look at them with my plastic binoculars one by one. Like, where did these things go? And so that doesn't really work, turns out. Um, my binoculars were pretty bad. Uh, but I looked it up, and what happens to balloons in the end is that the balloon keeps floating up until it gets to a layer of the atmosphere where the air around the balloon is so much colder than the air inside that the balloon expands and pops and falls on 
someone or something. Um, so it's pretty boring, actually. But I was very happy that I found the answer to my question. And uh, you're probably wondering, why am I talking about this? Uh, why am I talking about balloons? Why am I talking about Drake? Um, so it's not just because it has to do with taking flight. It's because I've seriously been thinking about my childhood experiences. And I realized that I don't think the same way that I used to. Right? Um, when you're a seven-year-old and you walk down the street and you see a balloon, so many questions pop into your head, right? What happens to this balloon? Where is it going? And OK, the biggest question that I used to ask myself is, can you drop a balloon? Because like, I dropped the balloon, but it's going up, right? So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and it sounds dumb to you guys, because you're like mature and old. But for a seven-year-old, that's a like, really fascinating question. And that's the entire point. It's that when you're a seven-year-old, you've just come into this world. And everything, every object, every person you see is something to be curious about. It's something that's new. It's something that you've never seen or experienced before. And that's why little kids are so annoying, because they look at the world around them and they keep asking you questions like, why is that chair red? You know, why does that piano make noise? Why does this mic make sounds? How does this balloon float up? And, um, and that's why parents get so annoyed at their kids. But they're just discovering the world around them. And isn't that a good thing? What I realized thinking Back in, the, back in my childhood experiences is that we think of maturity in our society. Um, when we think of maturity, what is that? You know, what happens when we grow up? We don't really get wiser or smarter. We just become more blasé about the world around us. We can look at the same balloon as a seven-year-old and not have any of the same questions pop into our heads. So what really happens when we grow up is we forget how to ask why. And I think that's a very dangerous thing. Because if you think of all the great people in the world, all the great discoveries in human history, think about what prompted those things. What prompted those things was ordinary men and women having the courage to look at the world around them and look at the most mundane of objects and have the courage to channel their childhood imagination and ask why. Right? I mean, when I go to Central Park now and I look at a bird, I think, wow, it's a really fine looking bird. It has some nice feathers. Um, when Charles Darwin looked at birds on the Galapagos Islands, he said, what is evolution? And he changed the way we think about life. Right? When Sir Isaac Newton looked at an apple, he didn't say, that's a tasty looking apple. He said, what is gravity? And he changed the way we think about physics. When Steve Jobs looked at an apple, he said, what is the iPhone? <laughs> and he changed the way I live my life. <laughs> and, you know, these are great people. Um, these are not the moms who say, shut up and eat your applesauce. These are not the dads who say, the clouds are made of balloons. These are that one guy who woke up in the morning one day and pointed his telescope to the sky and said, that is what happens to balloons. These people are still children at heart. And I think we should all try to stay that way. So my question for you to open up this conference is, after this is all over, when everyone's done speaking, when you've walked up these stairs and out those doors and back into the real world, what things are you going to see? What details are you going to notice? What questions are you going to ask? Thank you. <laughs>